And Robin's mad that she can't have this effect on our lives anymore because we just don't care anymore. And I'm not speaking on behalf of the siblings, but this is what I think all the siblings think. That this is us going, you know what, Robin? Have him. Oh my god, I get so frustrated and I feel so heartbroken for Gabe because you can tell, you know, him not having a conversation or him not having a relationship with his dad is really breaking him down. So I really feel bad for him and I really feel heartbroken that, you know, you have... Yes, Janelle fosters an environment where her children feel free to speak up, but the hurt and the pain on their faces, especially Savannah and, and Gabe is heartbreaking at least with garrison is able to speak up but anyway i digress hey there thanks for stopping by it's valerie welcome back if you're new here don't forget to subscribe we're still trying to get to a thousand subs we're almost there we are at 234 left anyway um click the like button turn that notification bell for when i upload new videos and definitely leave a comment in this episode i'll be reviewing sister wives season 18 episode 9 oh my god so uh you have christine at garrison's house she's you know she's still in flagstaff and she's going to be making dinner for all of them and uh, to sit down and have a conversation and she mentions that she left truly truly is not invited to the to the meal just because she wants the older children to have an opportunity to speak freely and express themselves um, so then, you know, Gwendolyn and uh, Gabriel are coming later. And is a, Savannah arrives with Janelle because obviously Savannah still lives at home with her mum. And during the conversation, I think, no offense to Christine, but I think Christine loves the idea of the children painting you know, telling the truth about Cody in the sense that she's always encouraging these conversations. And it's like, at times maybe have them off camera, but hey, it is what it is. So it turns out, apparently Savannah and Aurora go to the same school. They actually finish school at the same time because they share a teacher. And then Aurora goes home, you know, and Savannah goes home. Apparently they don't even speak. They don't even acknowledge one another. Um, And Savannah says she's never really had children sort of connections with children her age i would assume she has connections with all the other children because she said she's got connections with christine's kids and we, and then she said and and it was cut off i think she, she was trying to say and mariah and so it's sad that they cut out the mariah bit i don't know why i think they like this uh, tension of having mary and christine not get along at all so um it's sad to hear, it's sad to hear that, you know, they are siblings or are considered to be siblings because these children were adopted into the Brown family and yet they don't have a relationship with someone their age. When when the others were growing up, we used to see them together all the time. They used to go into each other's houses. They used to spend a lot of time together. So this doesn't make sense. And then you have... um. You know, Robin's daughter, Aurora, talking about, yes, we go to school with Savannah. Savannah doesn't talk to me. And because of the COVID rules, there was a lot of tension in the family. And it's like, please. And then she starts crying and it's like, suck it up. It's not that deep. It's really not that deep. And don't try and make something out of nothing. There's no need for that. Um, and so I, I don't get why she was crying. I really don't because she spends most of her, most of the time with Cody. She's the one with the mother and father figure in the household, whereas Savannah doesn't have anyone. So please sit down somewhere. Um, and then you have Mary, she's, you know, at her B and B, she's sort of trying to clear room for herself to come and stay because she had a big house in Flagstaff with the intention, you know, as a senior wife, I think she expected people to always come there for events and stuff, but now she doesn't need it. Mariah has since moved on. He's married and is doing her own thing, I think. I think she's married. Um, so it will just be her on her own. And so why would she need that big house, especially if nobody else is coming? It makes sense that she'd want to give it up and look for something smaller. I, As I said last week, I think she's only looking for a smaller apartment in Flagstaff just because of the filming. If not for the filming, I don't think she'd keep a property in Flagstaff. And also, I think she's keeping it until Cody says, no, nah, it's time for you to go. And then she'll pack her stuff up and go. Um, and so she's busy with her friend Jen and Jen's husband. And it's nice to see her have, you know, just a relaxing 
conversation with someone and, and enjoying herself because around her family she always looks so stern and so miserable so it's nice to see her with people that understand her people that are sort of joyous and seem happy for her to truly be at peace so i really love that about her relationship with jen so you have Janelle and Christine, you know, sit down with their children to have their meal. And Christine brings up the conversation about Cody. And I think it's about time. I know it seems like she's being vindictive, but I think it's about time the children express themselves. I am one person who d believes that as a parent, it's important for you to talk to your children. It's important for you to understand where your children are. That way you know how best to help them or do you know whether or not they're coping. And if they're not coping, you give them the support they need. Anyway, Garrison brings up, you know, well, they bring up the gift exchange because Christine starts the conversation and it's sort of explained how, you know, the siblings were trying to arrange a gift exchange. Robin then decided she wanted to do it over Zoom because she wanted all the siblings to see one another. And it's like, that is unrealistic. There's 18 of these children. Out of the 18 of them, majority of them are working. That would mean scheduling time in everybody's hectic life to make sure everybody's available at a specific time to do this gift exchange. That was unrealistic. The gift would have been the thought, seeing each other face to face. You could always FaceTime each other individually. You didn't need to sort of sit there as a group and have a Zoom meeting. I thought that was unnecessary. I think Robin was just trying to make herself the center of attention. And I don't know why she was involved in that conversation, given the fact that all the other mothers were not. And so because she couldn't get her way, that's when she was upset and she decided to withdraw from the event and her children also withdrew themselves. And so the rest of the siblings, I think, went ahead without them. And they sort of, that was the last straw for them that broke the camel's back and they were done with, with Robin. I think because as adults, they get to see how she behaves from an outside perspective. They're not always with her. So they get to see and hear what she says or does. And they've realized that she's always playing victim uh, because she always wants... I think when Robin came into this family as the last wife, I think she expected to be the center of attention. I think she expected everybody to adore her and her children. I think she expected everybody to treat her the way they sort of treated each other when they lived in Lehigh. And so because they were in separate houses, there wasn't that much of sort of communication. For her to say she wasn't welcomed, Christine gave up her daughter McKelty to go and live with Robin while Robin adjusted. So I don't know what else she needed. What other olive branch could Christine have given her outside of giving her her child physically to come and live with her? That doesn't make sense. Anyway, apparently... Robin then sent a message to Logan and McKelty to say, you know, I'm done. I don't want anything to do with this. If you want to do it, you can go ahead. And it's like, I don't get why McKelty has been very vocal about Mary, saying Mary is the worst thing ever. And yet she's okay with Robin, given how Robin has behaved since she came into the family. Make it make sense. To me, the math ain't mathing. Because if you think Mary is a terrible, abusive person... What about the psychological abuse that Robin is conducting on the family? The fact that she's always playing victim, the fact that she's always wanting everybody else to see her as, you know, you know, she is this precious thing that needs to be looked after. That is okay with you. That is okay with you. But you say Mary slapped you once or twice and that for you is, oh my God, I have to protect myself and my daughter. That doesn't make sense to me. The math ain't mathing. It really ain't. Because her mother left her marriage because of Robin. Janelle is leaving her marriage because of Robin. Mary left her marriage because of Robin. And that's okay with her. They're friends. They, they visit each other for Christmas, but she won't have anything to do with Mary. That doesn't make sense to me. That seriously doesn't make sense to me. I don't get it. I really don't get it. And so I don't understand how she can be okay with everything that Robin's done. And she can decide to carry Robin's water and give it to everybody else. When Robin sent her the message, she should have said, I love you. Um, I support you, but I feel you need to go back to the group and tell them what you want, what you want them to hear. I don't want to be the messenger because it's going to t turn my siblings against me. That's my opinion. That's what she should have said. And to see how heartbroken garrison was gabriel didn't even say anything you could see he wanted to cry he really wanted to cry and i like the fact that janelle fosters an environment where her children are 
free and comfortable to speak up because when Savannah tried to speak up, um, Gabriel was like, Garrison was, oh no, we don't, and, and Janelle had to say, no, allow her to speak, allow her to say her piece. And so I love that because if she is able to feel heard. She's able to feel like she's been given an opportunity to express herself, which I really loved. I don't know. Cody has really, um, messed up his family over some chick, but Hey, it is what it is. So while the three kids are, you know, spilling their anguish with their dad and how they feel they've been treated in their family and how they feel that he's been selective and he has a favorite family. You have Cody sitting there and calling his children jerks and saying, I don't want anything to do with them. And it's like, buddy, are you aware that this is going to be played on national TV and that your children are going to see this for the rest of your life? So you're prepared to give up on your blood for an inherited family. Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? How bad could it be? And I think this is why I said people call Mary the villain, but at least under Mary, the family was united, as in the ch the siblings got along. The siblings were always together. Even Mariah got along with all her siblings, and she loved all her siblings. And now that Robin is the legal wife, she gets to pick and choose who she wants. She loves McKelty. McKelty spends her daughter's first birthday with Robin, because apparently when Robin came into the family, she was the first person to notice that McKelty was struggling, and nobody was sort of acknowledging her. And yet, she chooses to ignore all the other children and she uses McKelty as her mouthpiece when she's got a grievance with the other children. Make it make sense. I don't get it and I don't get that sort of dynamic with McKelty and Robin. I never will even if they try and explain it to me. I never will get it because I think Robin is way worse than Mary. That's just my opinion. Anyway, you have Christine go out with her friends to celebrate her ex-anniversary, the day that she got ma uh, married to uh, Cody. And it was nice for her to introduce Janelle to a group of friends. But also at the same time, it was sad because she is comfortable with her friends. So her friends, this is their first time meeting Janelle. Some of the questions that they asked Janelle, I felt were inappropriate. And I feel like sort of, Christine put Janelle in an uncomfortable position whereby she was trash talking Cody, knowing that Janelle still is trying to build her relationship with Cody. That I didn't like. I felt was a bit insensitive. I think if she was going to do that, she should have called her friends and had conversations with her friends without Janelle being there. And so it's really sad because Janelle is in this no man's land with the where she doesn't know whether she still wants to be with Cody or she wants to divorce Cody and she wants to move on. So I don't think that conversation was appropriate for her. I really don't. I understand Christine has moved on. She's seen the light, but Janelle is still in the dark. She doesn't want to be led to the light. Allow her to find the light herself. You yourself said it's difficult to leave a marriage. So allow her to feel she's exhausted all options and she's ready to leave Cody. I felt very uncomfortable about that. I really didn't like it. I felt, oh, I don't know. I I felt uncomfortable for Janelle. I know she did try and open up. Janelle is not one person who's going to spill her guts at first go. I think it's, she's always got, you know, her guard up and it takes a lot of effort to sort of bring it down. So I don't know what Christine and her friends expected from Janelle. But hey, that's just me. Um, I don't know. I... I'm really sad about the season of Sister Wives and I hope this is the end of it because if they're going to continue to trash talk each other, then I don't think they need to continue because it's really getting bad and it's going from bad to worse, especially some of the things that Cody is saying about his wives, his ex-wives and his children. The fact that he said Christine forced herself onto him is like, buddy, are you serious? Why not just keep quiet? At times you don't always need to comment. You really don't. Because how do you think Christine's kids will feel seeing you or hearing you say that? I didn't like that. But anyway, I digress. Thanks guys for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. And click the link in the back of my video to see my review of episode 8. Bye everyone.